human angle to begin today with updates of Nigeria's COVID-19 cases. Currently, there are 17,735 confirmed cases, 5,967 discharged, and 469 deaths. On today's episode, we'll be discussing how the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons is addressing sexual violence in Nigeria. We have with us on the show Mr. Godwin Mocha, Director of Research and Program Development, NAPTIP, representing Dame Judy Okadonli, the Director General of the agency, who just had an emergency national assignment to attend to. Mr. Godwin Mocha, thank you very much for joining us on the program today. It's great to have you with us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. On um, the June 12, 2020 speech of President Mohamed Buhari emboldened the resolve to tackle the wave of sexual violence and rape in the country, how exactly is NAPTIP aligning with this position? Actually noting the fact that we have widespread cases in Anamba Kanu and there have been protests in Adamawa State calling for a state of emergency. Yes, um, thank you so much. I think uh, the President's speech was um, like a shot in the arm for NAPTIP. Mm. Because um, before uh, before then, uh, since the COVID nineteen lockdown, the director general has been uh, sounding off a, a lot of alarm concerning the rising incidence of rape yeah. and the worst types of rape, the rape of little children, babies in hand, and um, it now graduated to uh, rape with uh, accompanied by murder. So mm. she's had um, uh, uh, media or uh, uh, social media messages on this issue. She has called uh, press conferences on this same issue. So the president's speech was a very big post for NAPTI. Okay. But then, looking at the fact that um, such a state as Adamawa State is calling for a state of emergency, yeah. would you um, support the fact that the country needs to declare a state of emergency concerning the situation? Uh, as far as we are concerned, we should always be in a state of emergency concerning this kind of issue. Mm -hmm. uh, because really, once a state of emergency, I you going to ask, going, to, going to house, from house to house, mm -hmm. it's just a question of a sustained mm -hmm. and, um, and sustained action mm -hmm. backed with proper laws and the enforcement of laws. So once you are doing that, you should be doing that 24-7. So yeah. you don't need a special state of emergency to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because does it mean that after a while you, you realize the state of emergency, people can begin to continue to do what they are doing? No. Mm -hmm. The cases of rape and um, and the killing of people uh, of victims mm -hmm. is such that should alarm everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's a call to action that we should look at what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong and how we should do the right things. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, I think everybody is touched yeah. because it is not only about how you dress mm. or how you are dressed. It is about mm. the, 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 the animal kind of instinct in certain kinds of men that mm. has come to play. So, you, you, like uh, some women who are protesting said, women in hijab have been robbed. Mm. People have been, uh, sorry, have been raped. People mm. have been raped in churches. People mm. have been raped in mm. mosques. People mm. have been raped in their own homes. So, it's not about, about uh, what the victim does or doesn't do. Mm. It's about the mindset of certain people that need to actually be, be tackled, mm. either through fierce law enforcement, public enlightenment, and other forms of measures. Mm. Mm. Recently, um, NAPTI published a list of convicted rapists in the country. We would also like to understand if this will be periodic and the legal framework back in the list. Yes, it will be periodic. And um, the, 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 frame, the legal framework is from the Guidelines Against Persons Prohibition Act 2015. Mm -hmm that actually mandated NAPTI to set up the Sexual Offender Register, which was set up October last year. And so we felt that, um, uh, especially with this instance of rape, we should begin to name and shame mm. rapists. And yeah. when I said that, I referred to those who have been convicted for rape. Mm. Those are the ones that have been published. The Sexual Offender Register has two layers. There's mm. a layer that is open to the public, where names of convicted rapists are displayed. Mm. Anybody can access and see those and their pictures. So what mm. we did was actually to just call the attention of the public to what is available mm. on the website. Mm. Now there's another layer that has uh, the names of people who have been uh, arrested for rape, mm. not yet convicted, names of people who are frequent offenders who have beaten the rap so many times that they have not mm. been convicted, but they have been arrested often and often and all that. All. So we have that list which is not available to the public. That's not mm. what we publish. Okay. What we publish is only the list of those who have been convicted yeah. in the court mm. of law. Mm. But in terms of collaboration with related agencies, how has it been with the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and the Nigerian Governor Spouses Forum? Well, um, the, 
Violence Against Persons Prevention, Prevention Act was actually led by the Federal Ministry of Health Affairs uh, with other stakeholders. And uh, right from the word go, we actually collaborated, collaborated with the ministry to mm -hmm. set up the framework for enforcing the, the VAP Act. Um, when the Sexual Offender Register was also launched in October last year, it was the Honorable Minister of Women and uh, Women okay. Affairs that did okay. the launching at the uh, mm -hmm. Transcom. So we are collaborating closely. Um, other uh, law enforcement agencies, we can talk about the Nigerian Governor's Wives um, uh, Forum. I think uh, we are dealing with quite a number of uh, governors' wives, mm. and I'm not too sure that we're engaging mm. the forum as a body. For example, mm. the wife of the governor of Pekiti State, one of mm. our champions, uh, I see this in yes. uh, she's one of our champions. She's been working very close with NATI, mm. and actually reached out to NATI during this period to say, let us uh, close ranks furthermore. So mm. um, we're open to for collaboration with anybody, okay. including any, any forum, any women's group, even mm. men's group. Yes. It was very interesting that last week or this week, so men actually protested yes. against rape, which exactly. is a good thing. Mm. And uh, they also say, let us raise our boys, mm. just not only girls, because it's very easy to raise girls to be good girls, mm. to be able to, but we should also raise boys to be mm. a gentleman, to be mm. good husbands, to be yes. good brothers, and mm. to be good friends. Mm. But how exactly would you also describe um, the resolve of state governors to tackle the tide of rape across the country? Yes, we, 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 we are happy that many governors are now making statements concerning rape. Mm. But you see, like I said, um, sometimes, I'm sorry to say this, talk can be cheap. Mm. Um, put your money where your mouth is. Mm. If you really are against rape, strengthen your laws. Mm. And make sure that your laws are enforced. Mm. Strengthen your laws. We still have only eight, just eight states that have laws against sexual and gender-based violence Violet. in this country. Mm. So that means we have 28 others mm. that have not done so. And there is rape everywhere. So mm. please, don't just talk. Make laws. Take because action. if you talk and there is rape mm -hmm. in your state, and you don't have any instrument to, with you to prosecute it properly, mm. then you have, not been, you have not really helped anybody. Mm. Um, we are also saying that because the VAP, although maybe, uh, let me just stop there. <laughs> you were about to say something, Mr. Moka. <laughs> yes, because I mean, I was going to look at the issue of the laws. Because as far as we're concerned, uh, some people have said that uh, there should be um, life, uh, sorry, death, death penalty, exactly. castration, both which are extreme measures. Hmm. Yes, we, we share the sentiment about stronger and more stringent application of the law, but we are more concerned that there should be harmony in the laws across the country. Hmm. That yes. for example, the VAP Act prescribed life sentence uh, mm. for rape, which we have already got a conviction in March mm. in, in, for, in Abuja here for rape, in, mm. in conviction for one for life imprisonment. Mm. So, if all over the country the conviction for rape is is, is life imprisonment, mm. and people are made not to compromise because exactly. all of the problems we have about rape mm -hmm. is that people think it's a personal thing, but yes. no, it's a crime. It's a crime against the state. Mm. So it's not just it's not, we have settled with the, with the family. It's not the family. Mm. We have somebody's life who has, which has probably been totally destroyed, yes. and then by intimidation and all kinds of coercion, you may be able to succumb. Maybe it's a child that's even exactly. worse exactly. when you not exactly. decide for the child, mm. and then you, you don't you try to just paper over the wound that may damage that life for for for, for life. No, mm. it is not a, a family matter. It's mm. not a matter for pastors. It's not a matter for imams. It's mm. not a matter for the traditional ruler. Mm. It's a matter for the state, and it's a mm. matter for it's a it's a matter for for the law to yeah. be applied. So mm. let mm. all the states mm. make sure that the minimum sentence for rape is life imprisonment. Mm. There we are. Mm. Um, also, looking at the National Assembly, it has also called for stiffer regulations on the rape cases in the country, which we hope would cascade into states. What exactly are your views on this, and what role can NAPTI play? Well, NAPTI is already front and center. Like mm. you know, we have been implementing the, the VAP Act in the FCT. Mm. And incidentally, in all, all the states, when they have cases of violence and other, they still report to NAPTI. Mm. And so we look for remedies under the Trafficking Act. Mm. We well, cannot find adequate remedies. We work with the police or with the State Minister of Justice to ensure that justice is, is uh, served. So, 
we believe we wish that the VAP Act we had we had that it had a national application. Mm. We wish that that be possible, and we also wish that NATO be strengthened to do its job. Because mm. right now, so many people are talking about rape as if suddenly they have become experts. But mm. the institution that have been empowered by law to do it, nobody's mm. talking about strengthening that institution. Mm. NATO has had to actually, like, actually do magic to keep doing its work. One thing. You know, so let NATO be strengthened. Mm. Financial, let them be strengthened mm. by political will. Let them be strengthened by the, by the National Assembly making the right laws to enable us to mm. our job. We have the right framework. We have people who are trained. We have the right institutions, and we have the right policy uh, another to, another framework to tackle mm. this issue. Mm. So rather than everybody trying to jump in and then after a while, whether we lose interest and exactly. the problem remains, mm. let us strengthen a, a, an institution that has shown the will. Mm. and the capacity Absolutely. so that we can actually do this work and, um, and mm. uh, serve the good nation. Mm. Without doubt, really, there's the need to create more awareness on, on the dangers of rape and even provide support helplines for communication with victims who might need counselling and mental health stability. What measures is NAPTI taking to support in this regard? Yes, we have um, our, our helpline. We have Estan 627 Ash, which mm. is um, on, on Airtel. Once you just once like once you just click on it, you to mm -hmm. lead on what to see. Yeah. We also have the I report um, uh, app, which is on Google uh, Play, that you can download mm -hmm. and report any case of to NAPTI. Mm -hmm. We also have our hotline seven zero seven zero three zero 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 two zero three, mm -hmm. which is uh, also the trafficking line. So our and our um, uh, our call center is open twenty four hours, okay. and then you can also of course uh, write uh, send a, a quick email to info na info NAPTI. Uh, at at nati.gov.ng, I will get the link. So we have several ways that people can reach us at any time. Mm -hmm. And of course, people have individual NATI officers' lines. So you can reach the DJ, you mm -hmm. can reach any of us at any time. We are on duty mm -hmm. 24 7. Mm -hmm. Once you reach us, the right thing will be done. Mm -hmm. I get calls from all over the country. Mm -hmm. so we have a problem in the Gobi. I, I will get you to the right person who will answer within mm -hmm. the hour. So with NATI mm -hmm. is reachable from anywhere. Mm -hmm. But what, looking at um, other forces of the Federation as well, the police force, what exactly do you think they need to do in terms of addressing these issues as well? Well, um, we recognize that the police have an overarching um, responsibility across states, especially when you don't have, um, okay. when, when NAPTI does not have um, adequate jurisdiction, like the VAP Act limits also the FCT. Uh, so okay. we know that, so we expect one, the police should train the mm. officers to recognize the indices of rape, mm. to train them on how to gather and present evidence of rape, mm. to also train them to be empathetic to the uh, to the victim, mm. not to treat them like trash. And third and fourthly, they should not connive with anybody to sweep rape cases under the carpet. Mm. You see, it is blood money or it mm. rape when you decide to take money or connive and then over the head of a child who is hurting, who has been, whose life has been destroyed, and mm. say, let us settle. Mm. Nobody should encourage people to settle cases like that. Mm. Mm. But let's bring it a little down on um, Mr. Mocha. Um, the NAPTIP is known majorly for trafficking um, and protecting against trafficking nations. What exactly are, are, um, have been done concerning this in the nation for the agency? I talk in terms of uh, human trafficking. trafficking. Yes, exactly. No, oh, of course, human, NAPTIP has been on human trafficking since 2003 when it was set up. Mm. And um, of course, that is our main, that's our forte. We, we operate yeah. all across the country. As you know, we have 10 shelters all over the country. We have mm. key victims of trafficking. Mm. And uh, of course, since um, uh, inception, we've gained more than 420 convictions. Mm. We have been sent to jail. We have cases, hundreds of cases in court. Our cases are reported every year, and we mm. continue to, to investigate our cases. So mm. we are robustly enforcing the act, mm. and uh, we are hoping. Yes. So I, I think that in terms of trafficking, NAPTIP mm. is on top of the situation. Mm. It's just that, like we all all know, mm. trafficking continues to metamorphose. It keeps yeah. changing faces. So we keep following it where, wherever it goes, mm. and uh, that's why we keep talking about public enlightenment. Mm. We talk about preventive measures. We keep mm. talking about putting. Are changing the paradigm, you know, mm. there are mm. certain conditions that uh, um, that actually lead to trafficking. Mm. So, most people to trafficking, mm. 
So mm. what, what are the kind of conditions? When people feel that they are disempowered, mm. when people feel that they have no choice, exactly. when people are lured, thinking that there's something better. So those mm. are the points and emphasis of our public enlightenment mm. um, effort mm. to ensure that people understand that, yes, uh, the green the pasture may look greener that way, but actually, if you water your own, your own ground, mm. your own grass, it will become green. Mm. Um, we're also looking at the issue of uh, cultural change, I mean, behavioral change, uh, communication, okay. the cultural change issues that we need. Mm. People have certain ways of doing things that just says, why not mm. just traffic? Why not mm. allow yourself to be traffic? Yeah. So there's it's a whole range of communication mm. that we're backing on mm. and that we're doing, engaging from the grassroots up and to everyone so that we all look at this issue of even the good governance, provide jobs, mm. good Good welfare, uh, uh, good uh, welfare uh, 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 packages. Okay, okay. Provide good schools, health, healthcare. Mm -hmm. You know, basic things: water, light, roads. Mm -hmm. These are the things that will keep people at home rather than go. If our young boys know that they can stay in one place, they have power, they can do this, they can. They have. They are mm -hmm. very creative. Mm -hmm. They will stay and make that um, ten thousand naira a day or less mm -hmm. that will keep them going rather than risk their lives and uh, for uncertainty. So. I think that when we change our narrative at home, mm -hmm. when we let people know that, yes, things can be better here, and we're trying to put our money where our mouth is, mm -hmm. let us begin to see government policies that are targeted mm -hmm. at improving the lot the, the, the of, the, of, the, of the ordinary people. Mm -hmm. the, 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 a building or a, let, okay, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Yeah. A building is as strong as its foundation. Mm -hmm. And I see a nation as a very tall building. Mm -hmm. And with the, with the noble people at the top, up to the bottom. Mm. See, that building can only stand as long as those people at the bottom are strong enough. Yeah. And those are the so-called masses. Mm. If we can concentrate on lifting the masses out of poverty, the rest of us will be lifted up. Mm. But if we think that we can leave them there, one mm. day the whole building will collapse. Mm. That's what we are seeing all around us. Also, yeah. the nation is dysfunctional mm. because the average Nigerian is poor. Mm. So what can we do mm. to make this person better, this person's life better. Mm. What kind of services, quality of services do we give to them? When mm. we build roads in the rural areas, what do we provide? Do we actually make sure that the roads are well paved and mm. marked with street lights? Mm. Or we just do one small part and say that is what exactly. that's what you deserve. Mm. Those are the kind of services you go abroad. That's what makes us different from, from a place like Europe. Mm. You go to rural Europe, you still see streets that are clean, mm. well marked with everything well kept. So people live there, they feel good about themselves. Mm. But here we just do the little, you see what they call health centers is like kiosks. Mm. And they say those are the, that's what the serving rural people. When you get there, there is no medicine. How mm. do you want people to feel good about themselves? Mm. Okay. Let us take care of the least to the most uh, uh, vulnerable, the least mm. privileged in our midst. Mm. And you find that the rest of us will feel better. Mm. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Mokan. That, but looking at um, human trafficking as well, have there been any collaboration for, with states um, and the agency? Yes, um, mm. we have um, actually in 2015, okay. the National Council, the National Economic Council, mm. um, had a, a discussion about trafficking mm. and said that uh, states should collaborate with NACTIP to um, to make sure that the message, the anti-trafficking messages are sent down to the grassroots. Because at the end of it all, it is states that actually should take the lead because the victims of human trafficking come from states. Mm. There's no place called federal space apart mm. from maybe a city. Mm. Uh, every other one comes from states. Even a city mm. has a minister mm. Mm. and they have local government chairmen. So what I'm saying is that that is not the part uh, taken upon that and um, tried to work with state government. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, last year, the DG made the, took the uh, concrete steps to set up state task forces against human trafficking. And um, we tried, we thought that we were able to make uh, set up at least 10 to 12 um, mm -hmm. uh, task forces last year. Mm -hmm. But to get an appointment with governors was something else. Mm -hmm. There were some governors we made so many efforts, so we had even gone there, gone there, they said they were not available. Mm -hmm. So at last year, we were able to set up just five. Okay. And then this year, we're hoping that we're going to set up the about sustain. Mm. COVID-19 came and interfered. Uh, mm. So we're still hoping that when things is down, we should mm. want to hit the ground running. We're still making arrangements mm. for new uh, to, for new appointments to the governors. Mm. So those state task forces are supposed to strengthen collaboration between the states and NACTI, mm. in the sense that the mm. state governments or governors own the task forces. They appoint mm. the members, and then the task forces report to the state government, and then NACTI, the zonal commanders are co-chairs of the, each of the task forces. So we're hoping 
like that. In fact, we have had some good results from Delta State, from Ekiti State, and um, to an extent from Borno State in mm. the last one year. So mm. we're hoping that this year we can expand that and keep going on to all the states have these task forces. Mm. And that when the governors, current governors leave, the other governors will continue. Mm. Mm. Finally, um, Mr. Moka, what exactly do you think can be done as in, in terms of citizens, as an agency and the nation at large in getting rid of sexual violence, getting rid of human trafficking and domestic violence in our country? The main, major message is let us be human. Mm. Let us be our brother's keepers. Mm. Let us think in terms of the interest of the other person mm. rather than my own interest. Mm. Because human trafficking, um, uh, sexual violence, mm. gender-based violence mm. are all based on the ego, mm. just me and my own interest. Mm. No, think about the other person and their own interest. That will temper the way we, we deal with, we, we treat others. Mm. So that is basic and underlying mm. message that if we're able to do whatever we can to get to the point where we consider others mm. before we look at ourselves so, and mm. look at them and think about their own interests, mm. then we'll mm. have won that battle. Mm. Thank you so much for coming on the program, Mr. Godwin Moka. It was great having this discussion with you and gaining insight on the subject matter. Thank you so much. The pleasure has been mine. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And that will be all for this edition of The Human Angle. You can send in your videos, pictures, and comments to news at pollshareng.com or programs at pollshareng.com. And let's share your experience and views. Visit our website, www.pollshareng.com, to get more updates for my news stories and videos. You can also follow us on our social media platforms shown on the screen for further updates on our market reports. Till tomorrow, thank you for watching, and please keep staying safe. Thank <music> you.